Welcome back. All right, it is time for the power rankings. And uh, let's go ahead and, and, and we're going to jump in. We're going to do week one here. We're all set to go. Everybody set to go. Everybody ready to be mad at me? Good. Good. Keep that, keep that spirit alive. All right, number 32 this week, same spot as last week, San Jose. I had expected San Jose to be higher. Um, that, that result against St. Louis, it, it ended up not being the, the best of results for San Jose. However, um, it was an encouraging start for Celebrini. The problem being, he's now on the IR. And tonight, they looked like last year's Sharks. So, that's not great. Which brings me to number 31, Anaheim. So, Anaheim beat San Jose tonight. So, nothing really changes. And here I was already that if San Jose won the game, we we're going to switch them. Last year during power rankings, very often Anaheim and San Jose would switch spots. It was cute. It was nice. Um, I do not expect these two to be the bottom teams this year. We'll see if it stays this way. But I, I expect one or the other or both to move up out of that, that spot. Number 30, dropping seven spots from last week. They got the win tonight. But for Buffalo, this has not been a fantastic start to the season. Um, when you're four games into the season and you're you're not looking at a must win, but you're looking at a, you kind of need to. So it's not must win, but you kind of need to win that game against Florida. Florida, of course, missing Barkov, missing Kachuk, and your team needing a win after three straight losses. So Buffalo gets that win, but they still end up dropping in this week's power rankings. They're currently at 30. I'm really hoping that tonight's result against Florida get something going because again i'd really like to see buffalo make the playoffs some point at some point in the existence of this channel i think it'd be fun to do a playoff preview involving the buffalo sabers uh number 29 dropping a lot uh, 11 points from last week the new york islanders uh and again this is where it's an early start but for the islanders uh, they've lost both games and i just felt like the other team's look better than what we've seen from the Islanders to this point. I do not expect the Islanders to stay this low on the power rankings. I expect them to move up. It was one of those ones I was looking at and kind of swearing a bit back and forth, which of course I don't do on camera, but uh, I've settled with the Islanders in 29th and we'll see this coming week what ends up happening. I expect some big moves. Would I be surprised if the Islanders move back up into the 20 to 18 range? No, I wouldn't. Uh, number 28, moving up two spots from last week, Chicago. Um, you know, Chicago going three for three on the power play tonight against Edmonton, that shocked me. Um, the other shocker for me with the Chicago Blackhawks, they don't look bad. They, they don't. Uh, the veterans they've added look good. Pretty composed team. They play well defensively. I don't think we're going to see Chicago get blown out like last year. I don't think they're going to be a playoff team either, but they should be better, right? And that's the key when you're building is the building portion, not just staying at the bottom and tanking for all the draft picks. Uh, number 27, and moving up one spot from last week, Columbus. Um, Columbus tonight, there were two things. First off, winning in Colorado is great. I also felt like it reflected on Colorado uh, and, and the goaltending situation that is potentially unfolding before us. Uh, it is possible that Georgiev goes out his next game, gets a big shutout, and we don't talk about it, but if he gets pulled again, we'll definitely have something to talk about from Colorado's perspective. But Columbus gets the win. They do move up the one spot. Uh, number 26, same spot as last week is Philly. Uh, the Philadelphia Flyers, I don't expect them to win a ton of games this year, but I expect them to be competitive. I think that uh, the shootout victory they got over Vancouver was also a reflection of how they can take advantage of a team that maybe takes them a little bit lightly. And so, yeah, Philadelphia should be entertaining to watch this year with Michkov in the lineup. The expectation is more goals. I will agree with that. But at the same time, yeah, the Flyers, uh, 26th on the board this week. Number 25, also in the same spot as last week, Minnesota. Uh, many apologies, but for Minnesota, they beat Columbus and then they lose in a shootout against Seattle. We'll see when they're playing teams that are higher up on the board uh, where they end up. But for now, I have Minnesota 25th on the board uh so that's your bottom row and i know that there will probably be some discussion about the islanders being in the bottom row minnesota being in the bottom row for a second straight week but that's where they're at right now number 24 is seattle so seattle stays in the same spot as last week as well uh seattle honestly at this point in time i have no idea what to expect with seattle um 
They, they could be a very good team this year. They could be a middling team, and they could be awful. I've, I've really no idea, because the additions of Stevenson, Montour, clearly those have uh, had, had an impression. Montour, I thought, looked pretty good tonight, for example, against Minnesota. But we'll see when Seattle's against those, those top teams what ends up happening. Uh, number 23 on the board, and moving up six spots from last week, Calgary. Uh, the Flames, no pressure. It is amazing what a difference not having any pressure can make to a team's fortunes on the ice. It is. And I think that's what we're seeing with Calgary. There's no pressure. There's no expectation. Uh, as they said, too, during tonight's game, um, all of the free agent stuff, all of the, oh, is everybody leaving thing, that's gone. Those The players who are going to leave as free agents are gone. Now it's just players that want to be members of the Flames and want to prove that they're better than people think they are. And at this point, Calgary's moved up to 23. Uh, moving up to 22, moving up five spots from last week, Montreal. Uh, the Montreal Canadiens are a hardworking team. They've got some good, exciting young talent as well. And they have a first line that's looking pretty dangerous. Uh, Slavkovsky's picked up where he left off last season, which is what, of course, Montreal was hoping for when they signed him to that massive extension. So Montreal moves up. They're out of the bottom row. They're 22nd. And this is why Philly, Minnesota, and Seattle stay in the same spots, because they passed the team or two. Well, they passed the Islanders, but they had a couple teams pass them. And um, who else was it that dropped? Buffalo dropped below them as well. So there's just kind of a swapping of spots that went on this week. Uh, number 21, dropping six spots from last week, Detroit. So Detroit gets the win tonight. Uh, it is aided by the goaltending of Cam Talbot. Absolutely, they get the win. Um, but I was I was discouraged by the game against Pittsburgh enough that I'm I'm putting them here for this week, and we'll see what happens the upcoming week and and how uh, things progress from here. Talbot clearly uh, the better of the two goaltenders in their first two games between he and Huso, and so we'll see. Uh, whether or not Talbot gets the lion's share of games. I think he will. I think Talbot's going to be the goaltender who starts the most games for them this year. So we move on to number 20 and dropping one spot from last week, Pittsburgh. Uh, the Penguins are 1-2. and two. They lost tonight against Toronto. It was a close game, but it was a loss. Uh, so Pittsburgh stays right about in the same spot that they were at the start of the season. And for the Pittsburgh Penguins, there, there are times already early on in this season where I feel like you know, this is a team full of veterans. I don't know that they have enough to be a playoff team. I just don't know that there's enough there for them to reach the playoffs. Uh, number 19, moving up three spots from last week, St. Louis. So the Blues move up, not a crazy amount, and there's definitely some crazy moves once you get to the second row on this week's board. But I think the St. Louis Blues showed that they can come from behind. They can they can win some games. Uh, then they got into Vegas, and Vegas said no to the idea of, you know, the come from behind victory. And so we'll see with St. Louis what the model is going forward. Obviously, you don't want to be behind in games. You don't want to have to rely on comebacks every night. Um, that is not a model that works. We've had this in past seasons where teams are relying on comeback victories. And eventually, the defense usually gets better. And those comeback victories are a little more difficult. So you want those first goals. So we'll see if St. Louis gets off to some better starts under Drew Bannister in the coming week. Uh, number 18, dropping seven spots from last week, Vancouver. Uh, discouraging that they lost the 4-1 to lead against Calgary. Discouraging as well that they were not able to get the victory against Philadelphia. And don't look at their upcoming schedule if you want to feel like really optimistic. Unless you think Tampa, Florida, and other East Coast teams are going to be easy. Uh, Vancouver's going to be tested this coming week. And... Uh, if Vancouver's going to show that last year wasn't just like a really good year where everything fell their way, they're, they're going to have to show that pretty early because they did they did get a point in both the game against Calgary and Philadelphia, but I was not happy with the fact they didn't play a full 60 minutes. And now, with the loss of Tyler Myers on what I already consider to be kind of a thin blue line, it, it, is, it is highly concerning. Number 17, dropping three spots from last week. And and more just because teams passed them, and that's the Capitals. Uh, the Capitals did lose their game against New Jersey tonight. I, I didn't really penalize them for that. It's just more that other teams passed them. Washington Capitals with just one game. There's not much to go on. They lost the game, but New Jersey's looked pretty good early in the season. So we'll see with the Capitals whether or not they're able to uh, have a really strong week and move back into the top half. So that's the bottom half of the board. We happy with the bottom half of the board so far? No? Still not happy? 
I'm not surprised. I mean, the people are never happy. Number 16, moving up four spots from last week, is Ottawa. Now, they did lose against Montreal tonight, but they did beat Florida. And so for Ottawa, I feel like, okay, maybe this is going to be the year that they finally get above the playoff line and stay there. Maybe Olmark can get them there. What's interesting is Olmark had a really strong game against Florida. And tonight against Montreal, he was okay, but he wasn't like the winner or anything. So, yeah, I, I've got them at 16. We'll see where they are next week. I'm, I'm kind of hoping that Ottawa has a strong start to the season because they, they need that. Uh, number 15, dropping 10 spots from last week, Colorado. Yeah, the abs. Uh, it has been a rough go already for Colorado. They've allowed, what is it, 14 goals in their first two games. That's a disaster. Now, this is not the first time Colorado's got off to a slow start. When I did the slow start video earlier in the week, uh, Colorado was one of those teams that has usually had a pretty mediocre October, and they've woke up the rest of the way and done well. So it doesn't necessarily mean a lot. However, seeing Georgiev pulled in both of his first two starts, not great. Ananen didn't exactly steal the net and relief in either of those games either. So it is something to keep an eye on, but Georgiev needs to have a big bounce back in the next game. He really does. Um, it is very early in the season, far too early for any kind of panic, although I will do a panic index on Wednesday because why not? Uh, but yeah, Colorado at this point, 15th on the board. Number 14, dropping eight spots from last week, is Nashville. Uh, the Nashville Predators, it has not gone the way that was expected. Now, they had a furious comeback attempt against Dallas, which was fruitless. They did dominate Detroit shot-wise, but they're not getting the results. So, I didn't bump them out of the top half of the board, but I bumped them down to 14th. We'll see how this week goes. Um, when, I'm, when I'm adjusting rankings up or down very often, it's kind of a, okay, where do I think teams are at right now so that I'm not going to be moving them around a lot next week and that's kind of why with some of these moves i've made the moves that i have uh but nashville drops down to 14th um they just they haven't they haven't quite clicked yet and stamkos hasn't quite clicked yet i think he will get there uh number 13 dropping 11 spots from last week so another big dropper here that's the oilers um they lose tonight at home against chicago and that's after a stinker against the Winnipeg Jets, a game that was just awful. So for the Oilers and Connor McDavid saying, we don't want to talk about last year, last year's done. Well, now they've distracted us with this season, just not in the way that I think they wanted to. Uh, keep in mind, Edmonton got off to a really bad start this past season and still got all the way to the Stanley Cup final. So maybe this is just a pattern. Maybe they're slow starters, right? So that maybe that's what it is. Um, number 12, moving up five spots from last week, the Kings. Uh, the Kings get the win in Buffalo. They frustrated the Boston Bruins today greatly. And so decent start to the season for LA. Um, as I mentioned in the review for the Boston LA game, it looks like they're, they're doing the one, two, two, instead of one, three, one. It's, it's a variation on a modern trap. It's still a very trap like style of hockey, which a lot of teams play. Um, but yeah, LA is going to be stingy this year. And if the goaltending holds up and today Kemper was very good, uh, the Kings could, could be a little bit dangerous in what appears to be a wide open Pacific, but we'll see. And I say that because both Vancouver and Edmonton off to kind of slow starts. Uh, number 11, moving up 10 spots from last week. So the reason I'm wearing a Utah hat and a generic jersey, I do not have a Utah jersey, of course, other than the basketball one. And I, I'm not wearing the basketball jersey right now because that's weird. Uh, but I'll, I'll wear the uh, All-Star jersey and the Utah hat. And Utah moves all the way up to number 11. I don't know how far they can go with this. But Utah is kind of fun to watch right now. They're scoring at will. And usually the teams that are scoring at will early in the season, it doesn't stay that way. So it's going to depend on Ingram and Vimelka being able to hold things down in the defense. Getting a little bit better than what they've been through the first few games. But they're fun to watch and they're finding ways to win. And Gunther with five goals in three games. I'm telling you, that contract extension he signed this summer is going to end up looking like a bargain if he keeps playing like this. Uh, number 10, moving up three spots from last week, Boston. Uh, Boston Bruins, once they got Swayman in the lineup, I felt like, okay, they'll be fine. And then Swayman did not have a great first game, but his second game was pretty good. Uh, today against LA, he played very, very well. And he's going to need to. Uh, unless Corpusallo bounces back from the rough start that he had, 
Uh, they're going to need Swayman to play about 60 games this year. Uh, my, I would ballpark it at like 55. I think Swayman will play 55 games, and then the other games will be for, for Corpusello. But uh, Boston ends up in the top 10. They found a way to break through and win that game today, and, and that was you know enjoyable to watch for me as a Bruins fan. Probably less enjoyable for everybody who hates Boston, which is everybody who's not a Bruins fan. Uh, number nine, moving up seven spots from last week, New Jersey. So my concern with New Jersey about, you know, how they, they were missing defensemen and, you know, how what kind of start are they going to get off to, they're, they're okay. Uh, the win tonight in Washington, they're now 3-1. and one. Yes, the other two wins were against Buffalo, but still 3-1 and one's 3-1. and one. Um, I didn't think they played badly against Toronto either. I thought Markstrom had a rough night. Markstrom bounces back with a good night tonight. And so, yeah, New Jersey almost in the top row, uh, but number nine on this week's power rankings. So we get into the top row, and I, yeah, I'm i going far, far faster through this than I normally do because it's so early in the season. So there's not really a whole lot to say about each team. Uh, the it's, it's just it's such a small sample size, but it's still fun to do power rankings. And speaking of fun, at number eight, Toronto Maple Leafs. They're always fun. Uh, moving up two spots from last week. They're in the top row. Um, Hildeby and Stolarz. Not a bad tandem, it turns out. And Stolarz has been good. So all summer, I, I said I think Stolarz was one of the best signings I saw. And I worried in the back of my mind that I was jinxing him. But, yeah, he's been quite good. And for Toronto, they're 2-1 and one to start the year. Other than that shutout loss against Montreal, which maybe that's what they needed. Maybe they needed that wake-up call. Uh, they've been good. And remember, they still don't have a goal from Matthews, and they're 2-1. and one. So once Matthews gets going, you got to think that the record should get even better. Should. I'm not saying it will. Should. Uh, number seven, same spot as last week, Carolina. Carolina lost their game against Tampa, uh, but I, I felt like that reflected on how well Tampa Bay played that game, and we'll see if Tampa can keep it going. But Vasilevsky was very, very good in that game. Freddie Anderson was pretty good, too. It was a close game. So I didn't push Carolina down. We'll just keep an eye on how they do this coming week. They would have played against Tampa Bay tonight. It's a shame that game got, got postponed because it would have been interesting to see if Carolina would have bounced back and won in Tampa or what would have happened there. But uh, yeah, the Canes stay at number seven for this week. Number six, moving up six spots from last week, Vegas. Uh, the Golden Knights. One thing with the Golden Knights right now that I'm, I'm, I'm impressed by is now most seasons with Golden Knights, the third period. They're down in the third. Don't count them out. And if they get a goal or if they get some kind of momentum shift, they're going to win. Uh, this year, it feels like every time a team scores on them, they will answer immediately. And if they can keep doing this, that is a huge recipe for success right there. Um, I don't know how long they can keep that going, but it shows they're confident. It shows that the players have a belief in one another. Olofsson's playing the best hockey he has in years. Uh, Holtz hasn't really shown much yet, but he doesn't really need to. So even though uh, Cotter going to New Jersey looks like he's been a steal for the Devils, uh, Olofsson's been a steal for Vegas thus far, and they look pretty good. So we'll see how things go for Vegas from here, but as long as they're answering every goal a team scores against them, that's, that's impressive. Uh, number five, moving up four spots from last week, Tampa. I was very impressed with Tampa in that game against Carolina. And so I feel like at this point, they're trending towards being a top five team through. I know it's one game. I know. I know. Um, but here we are. And I, I, I think Tampa Bay in fifth spot works. Uh, we'll see this coming week what happens. Of course, as I mentioned, they're going to be hosting the Canucks on Tuesday. So should be a fascinating matchup, that one. I'm looking forward to that one, kind of, sort of. Um, I, 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 do, I do have some concerns about the Canucks at this point. But we can talk about that more in the upcoming week. We don't have to discuss that here. Tampa Bay's number five. Uh, number four, dropping three spots from last week. Defending Stanley Cup champion Florida. Uh, without Barkov and Kachuk, that's going to hurt. And if Kachuk misses more games, it was just illness tonight, so there's no guarantee he's back the next game. No guarantee he misses the next one either. But if they miss both those players, it's going gonna, it's gonna to hurt their record. And Florida may very well drop further if Kachuk misses more games. And if Florida's attack continues to look just not quite Florida-like. Uh, the, the feed I was watching of the game tonight, too, was Florida's. So you could tell the announcers were waiting for that big rally, and it just never came. There wasn't a rally. So 
Uh, we'll see what happens with Florida the rest of the way, but they dropped from number one to number four this week. Number three, moving up five spots from last week, Winnipeg. Uh, the Jets have looked good thus far. Uh, they did have some trouble against Chicago, but like I said, Chicago looks better right now than they did last year. So maybe Chicago's ready to move up. But Winnipeg, that, that huge win over Edmonton, very impressive. Uh, Edmonton takes a huge nosedive. Winnipeg moves up the board, and they're number three this week. Uh, number two, moving up two spots from last week, the Rangers. They did lose against Utah tonight, yes. Um, I also thought that they played they played pretty well. I, they just There were some breakdowns here and there. They did get a point. It got to overtime, and they had that big 6 nothing win against Pittsburgh. Part of what might be happening with these guys here, Utah, there might be some teams that are maybe taking them a little bit lightly and thinking, well, this is just the former Coyotes. What are these guys or nothing? So we'll see if, if teams change the way they're playing against Utah soon. But uh, the New York Rangers, I, I didn't bust them down for that loss. Uh, as I've said many times over with power rankings, it's not just the wins and losses that I look at when I'm deciding whether to move teams up or down. Again, with Edmonton and, and Colorado, part of the reason they drop like they have is goaltending. There's there's a very real concern I have with both teams with goaltending. And on some level with Vancouver too, I'm 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 a little nervous with Shilovs, a little more with him than with Lankinen. And so we'll see how things go from here. Which means number one, moving up two spots from last week, Dallas. Now, this is awkward because every year I have to do a video on, hey, I don't hate Dallas. Dallas is the team I root for. Well, now they're number one in the power ranking, so I'm not sure if maybe maybe the puck I'm using, Dallas fans won't won't like the victory green. I don't I don't know. I figured I, I used gritty for the Philadelphia Flyers, so I use victory green for the Dallas Stars. We're number one this week and move up two spots. Uh, they won their games. They looked good. Um, everything they're firing in all cylinder cylinders uh, or cylinders that works too. Uh, even though they don't have a cylinder, that's in Columbus. Maybe maybe now Cole Cylinder's going to Dallas because I said it. I have no idea. Uh, but yeah, the fact that Ottinger's playing really well, it's just it, it's it's fun. And then tonight they got goals from guys like Ben and Sagan, and so yeah, I I like Dallas's chances right now, uh, and they move up to number one in the power rankings this week. So uh, this is kind of that trial run. And next week, I expect great movement. Um, and I expect to look back on this board and go, man, THG had no idea what he was talking about. I'll just throw in like an um, entertainment guy garb and uh, and 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 just, just run myself down. Or, well, run the hockey guy. You, you guys know. Anyways, there you go. There's your power rankings for October the 12th. By the time these go live, it will be October the 13th. But I will still title it October the 12th. Anyways. So let me know in the comment section below how wrong I am. Um, I generally stay out of the comment section on power rankings because I, I just I just do. Um, anybody who disagrees with the power rankings, there's there's nothing I can say that will change anybody's mind. I used to try to do that. I I very I will sometimes still do that, but it's it's rare. It's not like it used to be. I swear it was like every other week I'd be doing a video. Okay, this is why these teams are here, and it's very early in the season, so keep that in mind. Um, say, you know, the, the rage part at power rankings, you can just sort of, um, just, just space that out over the year. Don't use all the rage right now. Just save it up because your team, if you're mad about where they are, you might be mad about where they are later. And if you use up all that rage, well, then what are you going to do? All right. Thank you guys so much for all your support. It means a lot. The channel passed 329,000 subscribers tonight. I am very humbled by those numbers, and I am very thankful for each and every subscriber to the channel. Thank you guys so much for all your support. Hit like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Uh, I will talk to you again soon.